what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overload here so this will be my spoiler free review for nia DaCosta's Candyman. Candyman is coming to us from nia DaCosta as a director she also co-wrote the script alongside jordan peele and ren rosenfield this of course being based on Candyman by bernard rose and the forbidden by clive barker the film stars yaya abdul mateen tiana paris nathan stewart jarrett coleman domingo tony todd i gotta get that out there <laughs> and vanessa williams and some other individuals that i don't want to spoil however the film itself is centering on a now present day cabrini green a decade after the last of the cabrini green towers were torn down a visual artist named anthony mccoy played by yaya and his girlfriend an art gallery director named brianna cartwright who is played by tanya moved into a luxurious loft condo in Cabrini, now gentrified beyond recognition and inhabited by the upwardly mobile millennials with Anthony's painting career on the brink of stalling. A chance encounter with a Cabrini Green old timer exposes Anthony to the, to the tragically horrific nature of the true story behind the Candyman. Anxious to maintain his status in the Chicago art world, Anthony begins to explore these macabre details in his studio as fresh grit for paintings, unknowingly opening a door to a complex past that unravels his own sanity and unleashes the terrifyingly viral wave of violence that puts him on a collision course with his destiny. Now, I just gotta say off the bat, this movie has some horrific imagery and the body horror is going to make you very uncomfortable if you're someone who is watching and the way the costa shoots this movie her direction is going to keep your mind going the, the, as you're watching anthony descend into this dark destiny that you could argue was started in the original film however the movie does honestly seem like it's being held back at times by its runtime because there's like certain aspects that will leave you as the viewer just wanting answers and there could just be things that were unintentionally left as plot holes you could argue um but going back to yaya real quick he is amazing in this movie his thrilling performance is going to keep you invested in the progression of anthony and this descent into madness and his collision course with his destiny that we know originates from the fate that he was supposed to have in the fire alongside helen who ultimately didn't make it out of that fire but now Candyman will reappear and he's after anthony now all grown up so what going back to the performance real quick the interactions between him and his girlfriend brianna it's awesome to watch and that's just coming from me personally as a black individual i love when i see positive black relationships put on display in movies that's just something that means a lot to me personally so i love the fact that they had a good dynamic for a lot of the film's runtime and then brianna who again she's played tremendously by tiana paris tiana paris not tanya tiana paris she is played tremendously by tiana paris she has this very loving nature towards anthony and she's just wanting to understand what's going on with her significant other and you know it's kind of just frustrating to watch for you as the viewer to see her have to deal with her significant other go through this because you're on her side and they're both so likable as characters anthony i would argue should have had a lot more put into what he was dealing with prior to him going on this downward spiral that he kind of is on for the majority of the film I, I don't feel like we spend enough time getting to know who he is right now before this happens but there are things you find out along the way that pertain to some lies that he's been raised on and the interactions that he has later on in the film with Vanessa Williams who returns as Anne Marie McCoy the mother of Anthony their chemistry in that sequence that they have is amazing to watch they're very believable as as mother and son and the breakdown that he kind of has learning what he's learning about who he really is it's it's kind of just not i not not necessarily overly sad but their performances might make a little might make you feel a little sad for anthony as a character and what you already know is going to happen to him because he he's not going to escape this he's he's not and just going back to the way tanya not tanya what is her name <laughs> T Tiana, Tiana, Tiana Paris, who portrays Brianna Cartwright, the way her character is written in this film, she is subverting a lot of the things that black characters would have died from if they did the things that she's subverting in this film or being written to subvert. There's one instance in particular towards the end where 
that moment you know the black character would have died but she is not having any of it she's all these things that go into what make that character the way that she is and the way it's portrayed on screen through tiana that is going to just make her the, a, a likable character and someone you are going to want to root for and hope she can make it out of this situation alive because anthony as we know is turning into Candyman. the dialogue at times is honestly hit or miss uh but there's this ever-present sense of dread thanks to again the cost of skillful direction and the eerie score that is just ringing throughout the film like honestly you will have this feeling of dread and unease the minute the film opens and the way it is shooting this scenery of chicago cabrina green and the way you are being introduced to what you're about to witness for over an hour and 30 minutes it's it's doing a very good job at setting that unease and putting you in a position to just get prepared to be uncomfortable with a lot of the stuff that you have portrayed on screen the commentary in, in terms of the themes that they're talking about the racial injustice etc it's not overplayed by any means all of this stuff is very relevant as it pertains to what happened in the original story itself i do not appreciate the fact that it wasn't as subtle as the original but it's not done in in overkill to the point where now we're in black christmas 2019 territory but the connections to the original are present and and just to please the fans who are worried about the multiple candy men i can say here there aren't multiple candy men there is only one and he's tony todd it is daniel robotai and what happens in the film i don't want to go into spoilers but what you're seeing in the trailers i i honestly am a little bit upset that i didn't piece that together myself as to what was happening after you see the film you'll get what i'm talking about but he, there indeed is only one candy man uh there's this gripping monologue that Domingo delivers midway through the film about the racial injustice and what Candyman means and what he solidifies. And it's very powerful. And his performance is gripping. That whole scene in that monologue is very chilling to hear. But again, I would argue that the best scene was the interaction between Anthony and Anne Marie when they were reunited. Costume designs, gorgeous cinematography throughout this movie is a beautiful thing to look at. It's it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. The only thing I would say I have an issue with, honestly, is the dialogue at times. The pacing is a little... The, the, the film does struggle with its pacing sometimes. The third act does feel a little rushed. But overall, I did enjoy Candyman. I would honestly give it a 7 out of 10. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications and miss the video. In the description, I have links to my social media accounts, my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.